Hi everyone, Alex here. Continuing with our HVAC series. Today we're going to focus on cooling and heating loads. It's going to be a brief introduction. I'm going to tell you the different type of loads, internal, external, sensible and latent and all that. Let's get to it. Hi everyone, this is Alex with BIM It Up, where we help you with professional training and coaching in mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection systems, and Autodesk platforms like Revit and AutoCAD MEP. Let's get started. All right, continuing with our HVAC series. This is cooling and heating loads using Revit. Let's briefly discuss some cooling and load components. So whenever you have a building, you're gonna have external heat gains, which include heat transfer by conduction through the building envelope, you know, the walls, the roof. So from the exterior to the interior of the building through conduction, then you have heat transfer by radiation, which is gonna happen through your fenestration, you know, windows, skylights, glass doors, and similar, that's gonna be sensible heat. Then you have heat gain due to ventilation and infiltration. You know, you're gonna have some cracks, you're gonna have some openings, open windows, open doors, and that has a sensible and a latent component because you're bringing in outside air, which is humid. You're also gonna have some interior heat gains, which are inherent to the interior of the building, and that's gonna have a sensible and a latent component. You're gonna have the occupants releasing heat. Lighting also releases heat. Equipment and appliances, you know, you're gonna have your computers, your servers, washing machines, dryers, etc. You're gonna have processes that can release heat. You know, you can have a steamer, an autoclave, or some kind of process that releases heat. And you can have some products that release heat, you know, apples, oranges, meat, etc. Let's also discuss some preliminary considerations. As far as general size of the building, if you have a small building, you can probably get by with a small DX unit, you know. You have a small evaporator inside and then on the outside you have your condensing unit. As you move into larger buildings, then you may want to think about larger air handling units that are typically fed by chill water, which can be air-cooled chillers, water-cooled chillers. Our building is about 1,600 square meters per floor, which is going to yield about 1 megawatt of cooling. Our cooling loads about 1 megawatt, that's on the large side. So most likely we're gonna go with some rooftop units and maybe we'll feed it with an air cool chiller. We'll see. In general terms, everything's a balance. You know, there's not a one size fits all for this thing. You always have pluses and cons. So if you have fewer larger units, then you have a lower initial cost because one large unit is more cost effective than two smaller units. You have less fans, you have less belts to maintain and replace. On the other hand, you end up with larger ducts because you have to feed the entire thing from that unit, right? It also becomes impractical. You know, how do you get such a huge unit at the, at the top of the roof or inside of the mechanical room? And long-term typically is a little bit more inefficient because you wanna have a little bit more control about this regarding the zoning, right? So if you have just one large unit, it's dumping air into everywhere. And even though you have your VAVs, you always have a minimum flow because of your outside air. So it can become a little inefficient. But for this series, we're going to keep it as simple as possible so that we can illustrate the Revit concepts. Let's say you have a typical day. In the morning, you're going to have your sun on the east. So the east side is taking a lot of sun heat, while the west side is not taking too much, right? Then on the afternoon, things are flipped. You have the sun on the west, and then you have the west side of the building taking sun heat, and the east side of the building taking almost no sun heat. So one thought I do want to share with you is regarding Ahu zoning. Let's say this is your building, right? And let's divide it into four quadrants to make it simple. And let's say it's the morning, so you have your sun on the east side. You have the conditions we described previously, which is four tons total on the east side, and let's say two tons on the west side. If you were to zone your air handlers west-east, you would have, let's say, Ahu 1, right, on the east. That Ahu 1 would have to be sized to be able to handle the whole four tons on the east side. And then Ahu 2, let's say on the west, would also have to be sized to four tons because even though in the morning it's taking care of only two tons of load, we know that this load is going to increase. So you would have to size air handling unit 1 as four tons and air handling unit 2 also as four tons. Whereas if you were to size north-south, so let's say you have the same building with the same breakout, with the same tonnage, in the morning, you could have an Ahu 1 on the north side taking care of only the north load, which would be two tons plus one ton, so it's three tons. 
And then you could have Ahu 2 taking care of the south side, which would be two tons on the east and one ton on the west. So even though in the afternoon this is going to become two tons, this side is going to be one ton. One ton. Anyway, just a thought. Uh, the units will be sharing the load and uh, there's just so many variables to take into account that even some that contradict what I'm just saying now it's just too many variables and it all depends on your particular case so let's just focus on our building our building is going to be predominantly cooling because we're in Miami Florida we're going to have various RTUs on the roof obviously and then they're going to be fed by an air-cooled chiller. And then we're going to distribute from the Yahoo's to our VAV boxes, which are going to have electric reheat. Because even though they're pretty inefficient, we typically don't turn them on here in Florida because it's hot. All right, let's go to Revit. Mm -hmm.